and welcome to our eighth Tuesday Club Brief. Well, we're in a crisis, aren't we? And uh, we've got these guidelines for you to follow. And I've taken it from the highest authority, uh, from the Bible and from God, for what we should be doing. And it says here, you need to be alert for prayer. And uh, you need to call on the Lord Jesus and uh, ask for forgiveness and say sorry and be ye saved. But it says there, so the highest authority in the Bible, I've got it written here, it says in the Bible, if you have a look in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armour of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So it stays there, doesn't it, about praying with all prayer, uh, so we should pray, pray. That's a good thing to pray uh, and set uh, our ways before God and ask him uh, to show us the way. And we need to call on the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the one uh, that has died on the cross for our sins, isn't it? So we need to ask forgiveness, say with sorry, and then we'll be saved. Well, now, we're in a time where we have to shield, don't we? We look at the old folk and those that have bad health and they shield and when we go out we can wear gloves so we don't pick up the bug and we can also wear masks and face shields and the people behind the counters are behind perspex aren't they so they're shielded and in that account we've just read in the bible it talks about the shield doesn't it and that shield was if you think of a Roman soldier, they had those big shields, didn't they? They come right up and round them to protect them from the fiery darts. And those fiery darts, arrows, uh, flaming arrows that were shot at them. And it's a big shield. And God gives us uh, this guidance in his word, putting on the whole armour. Uh, and it talks about using the Bible as part of that armour and reading uh, and prayer. It's a good thing to do. Now, if you remember our memory verse, all right, it says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, thou shalt be white as snow. And it says that in Isaiah uh, chapter 1 and verse 18 in the Old Testament now. And that's the Lord speaking. It's one of those uh, invitations, I sometimes talk about invitations, and it's an invitation from God to reason with him. So go to him, pray to him, and if you don't understand things, ask him. Now, when he says it's an invitation to reason, it's not uh, a negotiation with God. God has set out the ways that we should uh, come to him. But he's asking you to go. He's a God of mercy, isn't he? And you can go to him and you can speak to him. And it's one of those blessed invitations in the Bible. Come, he says, come unto me. Uh, and it's good to come to the Lord Jesus Christ while there's time. It's important uh, in this crisis. And if you're in a crisis, uh, if you haven't come to the Lord Jesus Christ, there's still time that we need to do that. Well, now, we've got a hymn for you to sing, and we'd like you to sing this hymn, and we learn about creation. May God bless us in that time. <laughs>
just sung, haven't we, uh, about that God who made everything. He created everything from nothing. Um, the earth, the sea, the stars, the sun, the moon. And uh, we're going to learn about that in a little while in our lesson. And um, we've been talking how important it is to pray. So let's pray before we meet around the word of God. Loving Heavenly Father, we are in a crisis. Uh, help us to pray without ceasing. Help us to call on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, while there is time. Oh, do save us to spend an eternity lost in wonder, love and praise. Do help us in this pandemic. Uh, do be with those that put themselves in harm's way uh, and care for us. Help us. Uh, as we learn of creation, open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts, forgive us each and bless the teachers and help us, uh, we pray for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. a new series on the first book of the Bible, Genesis. Can you remember how the Bible starts? That's right, in the beginning, God. God was always there. He was and is and always will be the everlasting God. He has no beginning and no end. He is eternal. People are curious to know where our world and all the people that live in it came from. And the Bible records for us how God, who is all powerful, created the heavens and the earth in six days. Last week, Mr. Armstrong told you how on day one, God created the earth and light. The Bible tells us it was covered with water and the earth must have been rotating exactly as it does today, once every 24 hours. Because verse five tells us, and God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. On the second day, verse 7 says, And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Can you remember what firmament means? God called it heaven. It is the expanse we call sky the atmosphere that is around our earth that makes it perfect for life. Now, let's find out what God created on day three. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. So the land was divided from the sea and covered with trees and plants. Just think how many different plants you can see in your garden or if you go for a walk in the park. Think how many different shapes and sizes and colours and perfumes you can find. And just think how many more there must be across the world. I went for a walk around my garden and look, we've got very big leaves, very small spiky leaves, silvery leaves. Leaves that are green and white, variegated leaves. Just to name but a few. And then what about flowers? Look at the colours. Purple, pink, yellow. Wonder how many you can find. And just imagine how many more plants there are across our world. And do you notice the detail? The plants that God created on day three were not tiny little seedlings like the ones I grow in my greenhouse. They were fully grown trees and shrubs and plants with fruit for food 
and seeds inside the fruit to produce more plants. Exactly as it is today. If you cut a tomato or an apple, the seeds are inside. So you note the detail that God gave. Some have one seed, some have many seeds. And this is all recorded in Genesis when God created the plants. And note it also says after his kind. That means that tomatoes will always be tomatoes and apples, if you plant an apple seed, will only grow an apple tree. They remain the same family or the same kind. Next, we come to day four of creation. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. God created light on day one, but now he creates the sun to rule the day, and the moon to give light at night. And the stars and the planets and asteroids, comets, everything in outer space. Look how it says he made the stars also. I wonder if you've noticed how we've been able to see more stars since we've all been at home because of lockdown. There's been less air pollution. And how many more are there out there that we cannot see? And why did God create the sun and the moon and the stars? The first reason he tells us is for signs and seasons and for days and years. Did you know you don't need a clock to tell what time it is? You can use the sun. The moon determines our months and the tides of the sea, while years and seasons are determined by the Earth's revolution round the sun once each year. The stars also change with the seasons. And years ago, they would have been used by travellers and explorers and sailors before the inventions of modern technology, which are used today. The second reason, God tells us, is for the sun and the moon to provide light on the earth. The sun gives us lots of light during the day and the moon reflects the sun's light back to earth at night to help us see. So our world was created by God, perfectly ordered. It doesn't slow down. It doesn't speed up, it doesn't stop. And we can tell when sunset's going to be, when dawn in the morning's going to be, and when all the tides are going to be. It's all exactly ordered. As God promised Noah when he came out of the ark in Genesis 8 verse 22, it tells us, while the earth remains, sea time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Next, we come to day five. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Have you ever been to an aquarium? How many different fish and sea creatures there are? And even now, more have been discovered in the deepest oceans of the world. What variety there are? There's whales and sharks, stingrays, squids, swordfish, jellyfish, crabs, shrimps, sea slugs, to name but a few. I wonder if you've got a favourite sea creature. And do you like to hear the birds sing? In my garden there's a robin and a blackbird. Imagine how suddenly the earth would have been filled with bird song. 
when, create, when God created all the birds, and God saw that it was good. And so we come to day six, the final day of creation. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Now God filled the earth with living creatures, elephants, dinosaurs, cats, dogs, spiders, lizards, tiny ants, just like Mr. Wilde has been told you about. And notice each animal is a distinct family or kind as they're called in the Bible. They're unique and different. And when they produce and have babies, dogs will have baby dogs, we call puppies. Elephants will only have baby elephants. Although dogs can be bred, so you can have like cockapoos, which are very popular today, they are still dogs. They don't change their family. But God continued on day six. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God created man and woman, the most important part of his creation. We are unique because we are created in God's image. If we look at a coin, at some money, this is a large special one, on the back you will find the image of our Queen. It shows that it belongs to the United Kingdom. And we are made in the image of God, our Creator. We were made to reflect on the likeness of our Maker. To be good and kind and pure and honest and just and faithful. And to show God's love throughout the world. And did you notice it says, and God said, let us make man. Mr Armstrong reminded us last week there are three persons in the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son and the Holy Spirit. And in the New Testament, in the Gospel of John in chapter 1, this is what we read. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The Word refers to the Son of God, Jesus. So God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit were all present at creation. And despite what you might be told at school, we are not animals. We are different. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, it tells us, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. Each one of us has a living soul, which will live forever. And our soul makes us capable of speaking to God, of loving God and obeying him. As the Catechism says, we were made to glorify him. And not only that, God also gave man a conscience. Your conscience is within you. It tells you what is right and wrong. You might not always listen to it, but it does tell you what is right and wrong. And God also created us with the ability to speak and to think and to reason. And these three gifts only belong to humans. And think about how we live. Across this world, people live in communities. They build houses, we all wear clothes, we enjoy our lives in families and with our friends, we communicate with each other in so many different ways. You go to school to learn, as you grow up you will earn a living, and there are just so many different roles that are important in society. Just think how important the key workers have been in this pandemic. So many different roles from doctors and nurses, police, shop workers, farmers, bus drivers, the dustmen. 
even your parents as they've helped you do your lessons at home. We are creative also. We can sing, we can play instruments, we can paint, we can create, invent and design all sorts of things. Just think of those scientists that are working on the vaccine at the moment to protect us from COVID-19. Does the animal kingdom live like this? Genesis 2.15 tells us that the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And Adam had the job of naming all the animals and creatures. But he was alone, he was different from the animals and he had no companion or no friend. So the Lord God, we read in verse 21, caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Eve was given to Adam to be his helper, his wife. This was the first marriage and is given to us as a pattern for mankind. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree which is in, is, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. How perfect the Garden of Eden must have been. Did you notice, God tells them that the plants are for food. Adam and Eve and all the animals that God created were vegetarians. There was no death in the world when God first created it. And next week we will find out why death came into the world. But we still have one more day. God's creation was complete and perfect. And the Bible tells us in Genesis 2 verses 2 and 3. And on the seventh day... God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Now why did God rest? Was he tired? No, God doesn't get tired. He doesn't need to sleep. Psalm 121 verse 3 tells us, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber or sleep. God was setting us an example and establishing our seven-day week. We have recently been learning the Ten Commandments. Can you remember what the fourth commandment is? That's right. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It continues in Exodus to tell us, Six days shalt thou labour and do all thy work. And then God gives us the reason. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that it in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Some people will tell you that God did not create the world in six days. Well, they say the days were long periods of time, millions of years even. But the Bible is God's inspired word. And he commands us to work for six days and rest for one, just as he did when he created the world to set a pattern for us, to follow for our work week. What a lot we have learnt from those first two chapters of the Bible. And as you grow up, you'll find many people do not believe God's account of creation. They would rather believe that nothing exploded in the Big Bang and produced everything in the universe over millions and millions of years, than believe in God, the designer and the creator of our world. But how complex and amazing are the different creatures in our world? Take this dragonfly. They are wonderfully designed to fly, just like tiny helicopters. In fact, Iger Tikorsky, who first designed helicopters, got the idea from watching dragonflies. They have two pairs of wings, which are light, but they're very strong, strengthened by a network of tiny veins. 
They're able to fly up and down and forwards, and backwards and from left and to right and also hover. Their wings beat 1,800 times a minute and they can fly at 25 miles an hour. And not only were they designed by God for this amazing flying, but they also have the most amazing eyes. Each pair of eyes is actually made up of more than 30,000 eyes, each with their own lenses. This means the dragonfly can see all around without moving its head. And do you know, fossils have been found of dragonflies, which are just like today's dragonflies, with one difference. They were much bigger then than they are now. And then, what about this clownfish? I'm sure you recognise this fish if you've watched Finding Nemo. Do you know, they like to live among the stinging tentacles of the sea anemone. Now, how can it be that they aren't killed and eaten by the anemone, like all the other fish which touch those tentacles? Now, all fish are covered with a slimy mucus, and scientists have found that the clownfish has a different mucus that doesn't trigger those deadly tentacles. This is just another wonder of nature. God designed these creatures to get along together. And if you're interested in finding out more about God's amazing creation and the world that we live in, you can go to the website Answers in Genesis. Click on Kids on the toolbar and you will find all sorts of interesting facts and videos for you to look at. And what about you? Do you realise that you owe your existence to the Lord God? Do you respect and love your maker? The Bible tells us to remember now your creator in the days of your youth, and we pray that you will. Mm -hmm.